Hey coders, what's up? It's Chris here, and today we're going to look at a simple example of saving and retrieving data from Firebase. But before we do that, in the last lesson, we had integrated the Firebase SDK into our Xcode project uh, via CocoaPods, and there was actually an error or something I forgot to do in the CocoaPod pod file. So I want to show you what that is, and because it won't work otherwise. So Right here, I'm looking at my Firebase project folder. I'm gonna go back into my pod file, open it up with my text editor. And up here, we had forgot to uncomment any of these things. What we need to do is uncomment this platform line like that. And we also need to uncomment this one because we're using Swift. So now you can save the file and we're gonna to have to jump into terminal and we're going to have to navigate to our project folder where I'm already at and then we're going to have to pod update. Okay, so now that that's done, we can jump back into our project folder and open up the XC workspace. All right, so let's go back into the quick start, which we were following right here. And so we had done the CocoaPod setup, and this is how we're going to write some data. First of all, we have to create a reference to our Firebase database. And so we're gonna grab this line right here. So this creates a reference to our database. I'm just going to put it in the view did load method for now. And we have to change this URL here to our specific Firebase app. So if I go back into my account, by default there's this first one right here. Uh, I'm going to click on it, manage app. That's gonna bring us to our dashboard. And so you can see here that our data is going to be right here and this part is actually the part that I need, or you can grab it from the URL up here. So I'm just gonna grab that part, and that needs to go in here. And you can see that this is kinda just a mirror of what's up here in your address bar for your dashboard. Okay, and let's go back to the quick start. And now we're just going to write a sample value into our database. Right now, Xcode is complaining that Firebase isn't a valid class because we haven't imported it up here like that. Let's press Command B to build the project just to make sure that everything's running. All right, that looks good. But what I also want to do is I just also want to add the reading data code. So in this example of reading data, it's actually pretty cool because what's happening here is that it's going to retrieve the data, but it's also going to listen for any changes to that piece of data. And so what's going to happen is that with this block of code that we're specifying right here, whenever the value changes or that piece of data changes, this block of code is going to run. So that works really well for things like a chat application or anything that you need to listen for changes. You don't have to keep checking the database if there's fresh data. So I'm just going to copy this part as well. Make sure that you're looking at the Swift part because you can also choose Objective-C for the code, and I'm just gonna add this right under here. So there's gonna be an error here. It should be print instead, but other than that, it's going to work perfectly. So now I'm gonna press Command R to run it, and we're going to see that it's gonna record this value into our database, and then it's going to also retrieve it from the database, and it's going to print it into the console. So you can see that here. So nil is the key and this is the value because when we save the data, we didn't actually set a key for it uh, and that's why the key is nil. Let's jump into our dashboard right now just to see the data and here you can see the value that we added. Now you might be wondering, this looks kind of strange, right? Where are my tables? Where are my classes? If you're coming from the parse side, which we spent you know a couple of weeks looking at, the way that Firebase stores the data is very, very different where parse was a relational database, meaning that it had different tables or record types. For example, you might have a customer's record type where it has all your customers and then you have maybe another table with products or something like that. And then there's a relationship between customers and products. Well, Firebase is a non-relational database and it's very, very important to understand the difference and how to structure your data optimally. There are no concept of tables or record types or anything like that. Instead, with Firebase, all your data is in a giant JSON tree. So there's this document here that describes how your data is stored, 
And it's very, very important to understand the differences between this new data structure, a non-relational data structure, versus what we're used to in Parse. When I first started working with databases, it was with MySQL and Microsoft SQL Server, and then with Parse. So everything's kind of been table-based and relational. And so it's been a mental shift for me as well to understand how to structure data in non-relational database, such as Firebase. Before we move forward with saving and retrieving data, I think it's important that we spend a couple of lessons looking at all of the thoughts and considerations that we have to think about in terms of structuring our data. If you want a head start, you can read this document here, Understanding Data, and also this one right here, Structuring Your Data. And if not, well, in the next few lessons, I'll be going over these two documents with you and distilling the key points into a couple of videos for you guys. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys have a great weekend and I'll see you guys next week. Talk to you guys later. Bye.